by the way, hello, beautiful human. <laughs> I am Zach. That is Dan. Yep. We welcome. I, I don't want to ruin your beautiful last name. Oh yeah, Afualo. Yes. Wow. Look at you. We welcome Drew Afualo to Woo. the studio. Period. <laughs> Woo. I, this is how I know I've made it. <laughs> I'm in there now. I, it wasn't being at Coachella with like you plus 97 people all having artist guest passes. Yeah, not Brittany Roski telling Zach, well, if she comes, she's going to bring a plus 12. <laughs> Listen, I'm Polynesian. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I do have a plus eight. Like at all times, I don't know why. Well, I'm sorry. Well, there's safety, there's security, and yeah. you keep family around you. Always. Yeah, always. Yeah. I always have my mom and sister always with me. My sister's not able to come today, but my mom's here. Period. Hey, mom. There Gorgeous. Like, your mother is <laughs> stunning. I know, right? Everyone's like, are you guys sisters? And I'm like, I came out of her. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Not quite. Um, yeah, I always have them. My boyfriend's always with me. Uh, my brother-in-law was with us. Like, my agent. <laughs> my plus seven. But at all times. Is there a want or a deep desire to keep as much of what was around mm -hmm. you as you go into what is and what's going to be? Yeah, I mean, wow, what an insightful way of asking that question. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that there's a, there's like a certain level, I think when you start really growing the platform, I mean, you've been in the game, both of you have been for so long, um, you almost like crave tedium and like normal, say, like regular shit, like going to the store yeah. <laughs> and like driving in your own car alone. Like I, hardly do shit like that anymore so I feel like keeping my family around me helps me remind me that I'm just a regular ass bitch and that's okay <laughs> like I have this amazing wonderful career and platform which is a, a blessing and it's so incredible and it's given me a life that I've like always dreamed of but at the same time I feel like that's how you get lost in the sauce when you don't keep normal people around you like people that knew you before, people that love you for who you are before the platform. It's really hard, I think, especially as influencers, as icky as that term is. I feel like it's so easy to get lost and to get swept into this world because it is crazy. Like when you go and, and get the platform and you go to things like Coachella and you like go to all these amazing events and meet people you never thought you would meet in your entire life, I think it gets really easy to get lost. So I think that they're kind of like, as cheesy as it sounds, they're like my lighthouse. Like they keep yeah. bringing me back home, which so is a good thing. That is, yeah, your North Star, your yeah. center, all <laughs> yeah. of that makes the most sense because, it, well, a bunch of questions. Your dream shifts drastically from like wanting to be the next Bob Costas and <laughs> yeah. thinking you make it working for the NFL. Yeah. But like, would you say your dream has shifted to what you're doing today or is was this just an outlet that you had at your fingertips because you had nothing else going on. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, Bob Costas, that's so funny. I said that on my resume, like, when I was, like, 17. Look at you, interviewer. You should do this for a living, Zach. I, I, You're so good. I think we're on to something. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like, I feel like if I was really honest with myself, I feel like my dream was always to be in entertainment. I just thought sports was the vehicle. Like, I thought that would launch me at least into the world. Because sports and entertainment are so closely intertwined in a lot of ways, especially nowadays. But when I was in college, like, I thought, okay, if I if I sideline report for sports, like, I'll build a platform and I'll, you know, get to interview people and I'll get to, like, interact and mingle with people that I admire. And maybe I'll build and I'll be a host of some kind and maybe it'll just be in sports. But I think... After getting fired, I think <laughs> you just it really puts you, it really humbles you getting fired. Um, I think that it shifted my perspective entirely. Like it really changed how I saw myself because I thought to myself, did I even really like sports? Like I was like asking myself this as you unpack like your internalized misogyny and you realize like, why was I really doing that? Was I doing that because I loved football or was I doing that? to prove a point was I doing it because I felt like if I'm one of the only brown women to exist in this world that's a good thing like so if anything I feel like that was the driving force behind me wanting to be in the NFL which is essentially what my platform is now which is like 
existing in a patriarchal world but having a voice and being loud and like garnering an audience with that voice I just thought it was going to be talking about sports turns out it's just being really fucking mean to terrible men online (laughs) which is more of a purpose I feel like that's actually what I was meant to do and I feel like if I'd never got fired well obviously I know that now if I'd never gotten fired I never would have built the platform so it, it all happens for a reason I truly believe nothing ever happens to me by accident everything is like on purpose and for a reason were you able to pinpoint why you wanted to be in sports and what your main motivator was behind going after it in the first place um i mean i'm unpacking in therapy but also uh i talk about it a lot as i'm writing my book right now but i think if i really like sat down and thought about it with myself my dad is a former nfl player my dad played football um really late in life like my dad got recruited when he was in junior college to play football. he had never played football before and um, they just saw how big he was. My dad's 6'6". So they were like, have you ever thought about playing football? And he was like, no. So they put him on the team. He made it. He did really well. He got a scholarship. Wow. And he got drafted, which is, like, all within, like, two, three years. By the way, like, totally, like, defying every <laughs> yeah. odd imaginable. No, actually. Like, literally, my dad defied all odds, which is very normal in Samoan culture. Like, Samoan men are very, very, very privy to go to the NFL. We're just so athletically gifted in that way I guess I don't know um but my dad had a very short-lived career in the NFL because my dad didn't know like my mom and him were both navigating it together they had they're in their early 20s they have two kids my sister and I um and they're trying to figure it all out and so like my dad's career was very short-lived and I felt like me going into football like trying to work in football professional sports I felt like I was I guess I felt like I was redeeming him in a way. Unfinished business. Yeah. And I also felt like, I feel like so strongly about this. I talk about it a lot, but like Samoan people, especially men are like so revered for their physicality and their athletic capabilities. Like that's really all they're ever known for. Like, even if you look at the rock who has someone, he's someone who's been able to transcend culture and move into entertainment movies, all that kind of stuff. But like, before that he was trying to be a football player. Uh Um, Like if you look at the WWE, there's lots of Samoan people in there too. I feel like that's all we're ever really known for is being big and strong. If you don't watch football, chances are you've never heard of someone, people or met them in any capacity. And so I feel like with me, I was like, well, this is a chance for me to like be a someone person, but not be in sports. Like I could do commentating. I could be known for being a personality. I could be known for being smart or being funny. Yeah, add brain and personality person. To the yeah. Mix. An actual human with thoughts and ambitions and, and things that don't revolve solely around how big and strong I am. And I think, I think that's why I think that's what was really driving me because I was like, I could do it. I could easily do it. Like I could do what these other women do. I could do what these men do. Like me being a Virgo. Me being like, I don't know anything about it, but I could probably master it. It's fine. Yeah. That's just me being a know-it-all. Just give me 10,000 hours. I'll figure it out. Girl, 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. I could easily do that. Um, my overzealous confidence. Um, but by the way, like there is something to that confidence and that blind naivete that allows you to yeah. tackle things that you probably aren't qualified or most likely aren't qualified to do. But yeah. because you, you tackle it and, and take that leap, you end up really proving something to everybody yeah and especially I feel like to myself especially because this is also something I'm unpacking therapy I'm someone who I my worth and and value and confidence has almost always come from my external accomplishments like my validation I find through my accomplishments so like being really smart like being the best at sports like winning awards trophies like accolades which is also bad I know that now. (laughs) I used to think like, I don't get it from men. I get it from winning, which is also bad. Um, It's just not sustainable. Like it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. It should be something that you have because you love yourself unabashedly, not because you're just the best at whatever it is you try. Um, So getting to a point where you love yourself in an unwavering manner is like way easier said. than No, truly, especially, especially as, Wherever you sit on the intersection of like oppression, being marginalized, wherever you sit, it's the further down you go, the harder it is to be like 100% confident in who you are and what you look like and how you present to the world, Um, which is also a big part of my platform. I feel like that's why people love me, you know. (laughs) Is there 
there's a responsibility that comes with managing and putting yourself out there on a platform like the one you built. Yeah. I mean... To the point where it's almost frightening sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first thing that a lot of creators especially tell me when they meet me is they always ask me, like, how do you do it, man? Like, how do you do this? Like, because my platform is almost solely comprised of hate. Like, mm -hmm. it's like 90-10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that's how I built it in the first place is, like, by off men saying terrible things not just to strangers on the internet but to me right yeah. um directly and i feel like they always ask me how i do it i don't i don't know i guess i feel like well first of all like i said my confidence doesn't come from men at all so it doesn't hurt me when some whack ass <laughs> bitch tells me i'm ugly like okay it comes okay, from twin it, it, <laughs> uh, is what I always say. Yeah. it comes from winning yeah so it comes from winning and being the best and me being better at being mean is a, f a way of me winning, I guess. No, totally. So you are winning. I mean, you're financially winning. You're <laughs> fame winning. You're, I mean, I mean. you're you're winning mm -hmm. across the board off yeah. of the hateful rhetoric yeah. coming from white men all across the country. <laughs> yeah. But like, does it take a toll on you reading that stuff all the time and having to kind of live with it every day? I think it does. It does in the way, and not in the sense of how it makes me see myself. It's more so that I just can't believe that people are so awful. Like, I, uh. it makes you feel hopeless almost sometimes. Like, it, it's just never going to get better because outside of what I choose to platform, like, the men that I, you know, choose to stitch and stuff, outside of them, I see some of the worst things you could ever imagine. Like, I'm exposed to the deepest, darkest corners of the internet, and people are truly awful, like, Men especially, like, they are, they really are so incredibly rancid sometimes. And they're so comfortable, like, platforming it. They're so comfortable putting their government name on it, attached to it, joking about it as if it's a game, and it's not. And I feel like it makes me feel, I, I call it, like, jokingly, like, the most aggressive form of job security because I'm never going to be out of a job. <laughs> like, they're, they're never going to stop being awful, and I'm never going to stop making content. So it's just, like, a, a win-lose. But um, that does not how I want to feel about it. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm never going to be out of a job. I, I would hope that at some point I don't have to do this anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's really the part that I think sits with me the most. makes me feel sad and scared for other people, too. Do you, as somebody who has become intimately familiar with the worst sides of the internet, mm -hmm. see a path to, I don't know, a more accepting reality or, mm. I mean, you sound pretty hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that. It feels hopeless sometimes. I see it. I just think, I truly believe it's not going to come from them. It's going to come from us. Like, we're, we're the people that are going to change it. We have to change how we react to it. We have to change how we stand up to it. Like, we have to be more vocal about how much we don't like it. I feel like that's that's why people gravitate towards me and my community has been built because women and femmes and everyone else in between, they're just so tired of having to constantly look the other way. They're tired of having to like take the, the high road of having to be nice, of having to be quiet, of having to dim because God forbid you say something, what could happen? Well, the worst thing could happen is you being murdered. Right. Mm. But on the other, on the latter half, like your work environment becomes hostile. Your relationships become hostile. Like if you choose to stand up for yourself, there is a price you have to pay. I know for a fact now. Um, I'm assuming you get that threats all the time. I'm all assuming time, you have security of some type, right? Ev right yeah. Yeah. I've taken extensive, extensive measures to protect myself and my family, which is another thing I never thought I would have to do. Cause I, you know, I just made silly in videos on the internet and turns out people want to kill you when they see them, which is insane. Like, and that's just, it's all really harsh reality, but it's true. Like, and that's the reality of, being a woman so it's like if we're being honest it's not new 
it's just more prevalent. It's just more, it's almost like it's just increased in volume. It's not necessarily increased in severity because women get death threats all the time from men they spurn when they turn down men. They don't even, men they never even met, like they've never met before, but you know what I mean? There's so many situations where women's lives are endangered. That's why misogyny is so much more than just mean words, like mean jokes, which is what I think the problem is. These men on the internet that I stitch, they think misogyny is a joke. They think it's like, oh, I made a joke about you making sandwiches for me and now I'm the bad guy. But it's like, <laughs> it's to that same level, like I made a silly joke about you looking like a rat and all of a sudden I'm Diablo himself. Like it's just, mm. the overreaction is different, but the, the, the facts remain the same is that what you uphold is what you promote. So you continue to uphold white supremacy, misogyny, transphobia, homophobia, all of these different levels of bigotry, you you perpetuate it in the real world. It doesn't go away just because you got off TikTok. Just because you deleted your account or logged off doesn't mean that the rest of us don't deal with what it is you put out in the world, which is like the whole point of why women like me. Yeah. Like, that's why they like me. And, and by the way, I think you, you made this point. When you're insulting somebody, you're insulting one person. When mm -hmm. they're insulting someone, they're insulting an entire gender Truly. or group of people yeah. or an already marginalized group. Yeah. It's completely different. And to compare the two doesn't even make fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just talking about one person. They're coming after tens and millions of people. No, truly. And I think, too, like... Because I get that all the time, too. They're like, well, you know, you make fun of short guys. Two like, wrongs don't guys. make a right. Yeah, two wrongs. Oh, girl. Tattoo that on my fucking forehead. I hear that all the time. Two wrongs. You can't fight fire with fire. Which logistically is not true. No. <laughs> you, you ever heard of a controlled burn? When they have a fire, they burn everything in front so it has nowhere to go. So uh, technically speaking, this is me being a Virgo. You can fight fire with fire. Listen. So she just burn it down. <laughs> ask, ask a wild forest fire guy. I'm telling you, it's the truth. But I, I think too, like, I always think like, it's all under the guise of jokes, right? I'm, I was just making a joke. Same. Yeah. You know, like my jokes. I don't understand. I thought we were having a silly, goofy time. But that's superficially. But also in the real world, I'm like, just because women are mean to you on the internet does not mean you're being oppressed. Those are two very different things. And Correct. I feel like most of them don't know the difference. So they think, oh, this is oppression because Drew was mean to me and people flooded my comments and were telling me my hairline is shit. And that's so mean. That's so mean to me. And I'm like, well, <laughs> if you make jokes, you got to be able to take jokes. So sometimes men are like, well, then I should be able to call you a fat cow. And then I go, by all means, I encourage it. <laughs> you make jokes first. Send me a pic of yourself, and then I'll jump in after. <laughs> I'm super okay with that. You can make fun of what I look like. I'll make fun of what you look like. Fun. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you stitched a video? Yeah. Yeah. The first video... Well, actually, the first video that blew me up was not even a video of me stitching a man. It was... Um, I did... I, I stitched this girl. She said, um, what's, a, what's a very specific red flag in men that you have? Mm. And I made a whole list. And then I... It was like 10 things, and then I just went on the list. And they were very specific. Like I said, you know, if, if Wolf of Wall Street's your favorite movie of all time, if you wear a backwards hat in the pool, if you got loyalty tattooed on your arm, listen, I don't make the rules. I said one time's a coincidence, two times it's a pattern. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not a scientist, but if you all do it, then what do you call that? Like, a fact. That's what you call that. So <laughs> that was the first video I ever had that, like, took off. Like, it, it went super viral. And... I had an influx of women and femmes and other people just being like, this is so funny. Like, oh my God, I, I dated someone who loved Tom Brady too. And he was insane. And they, they were just like, oh my God, I feel so seen by this list. It was just like, they loved it. And at the same time, I got like a whole wave of hate from men, a very specific kind of man. Um, even some men that are verified that I think, don't think I remember that they commented on that. But no. like I said, as a Virgo, I never forget. Never forget. And I keep all receipts. Always. <laughs> remember that the next time you're hate on my video. Uh, <laughs> but there are some men I've met in real life that I know don't like me, but are too scared to say it to me. Ooh, I so love it. Like who? Just, I'll tell you offline, Zach Ooh. saying. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about If Keaton, you tell me one of yours, I'll tell you one of mine. Oh, I love. Uh, well, online, I'll, you can tell me yours if you want. <laughs> 
<laughs> I already, I already, I do control burns quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you just like me for real. My whole life is fighting fire with fire. <laughs> no shit, literally. What is water? Uh, actually, though, well, I was gonna say because this is part of your career and like keeping receipts. Do you actually like take screenshots, write things down, so you can bring it back up later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all you the like, time. You have like a folder? I, 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 yes, I have multiple folders. I'm not kidding. That is not a joke. I made a video once where this guy, well, I, I got was getting tagged in this video and then it like disappeared. Typically, when that happens, they blocked me, right? Um, and then I have I have a burner, <laughs> and I go I go and I look on my burner and I'm like, they did block me. They absolutely blocked me. I figure it out, and I screenshot those. And I have them on my own phone. And then um, I remember one time this guy, he made this horrible video about uh, fat women. They always like, they love to make fun of fat women because they're, you know, under 5'7". <laughs> and uh, when I was watching it, he made another video a year later. I'm not kidding. Almost to the day, a year later, made another video about fat women because that's just like his thing. And um, in the comments, someone tagged me and he wrote, you think I'm afraid of that fat bitch? Like something like that. And I'm like, I, I said, why does this guy look familiar? So I go and look in my files <laughs> and I found that he blocked me because he's a bitch. So then I stitched it and I said, so funny you say that because clearly you're afraid of me because you blocked me a year ago and you think I didn't remember. And he deleted that video, deleted a bunch of other videos. And he was like, I never said anything. I listen. I, he just backpedal of the century. And this is just a random man. Yeah. Just some random kid works at the fucking Regal cinema. Probably. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. You literally give <laughs> keyboard warriors a run for their motherfucking money. Yeah. I feel like I started a series on TikTok where like I just screenshot what they wrote and then I just screenshot what they look like and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put a silly song in the background and I just let people see what they look like because I'm like, that's the guy. Yeah. No, that doesn't hurt my feelings. Is this? Like, <laughs> no, it doesn't hurt my feelings when he calls me ugly. Mm. Do you feel like you're doing some form of justice? I think to an extent, yeah. I mean, I I feel like the impact that I have goes far beyond like sticking it to some random shithead on the internet. Oh, totally. It's more so, I think, you know, just from what people have told me, like people who love me and they, they send me their messages of, of how my content has helped them and everything. I feel like it goes beyond just like being silly and funny. Like it's, it's taking power back. Like it's, it's telling them like, not only am I not going to deal with you being disrespectful, but I'm going to be disrespectful back to you. And it's going to, whatever it does to you, I don't care. Right. Like, and I think that's the misconception about me is like when people are like, well, I just feel like she could be nicer. If you give me one example where you were nice to a misogynist and it helped, let me fucking know, bitch. <laughs> well, let me know. By the way, I, I you know, all I keep thinking, I'm very much a solutions-oriented mm -hmm. human being. Same. And I really do believe in a better universe for everybody. And I do believe that we can reach a, mm -hmm. a, a society where talent is equally distributed but opportunity isn't yeah. where education is fair and mm -hmm. proper and the best school districts from beverly hills are duplicated <laughs> in every zip code across the country truly yeah it's like how do you get to a place where morals exist and equality is possessed by everybody no matter who they're looking at it's education dude truly Actually, though. And I always make the, the, the comparison of, like, you're in a kitchen and it's flooding and there's feet of water in the fucking kitchen and th literally the, the, the sink is still going, right? There's mm -hmm. still water coming out of the sink. What do you do? Do you take a bucket and start throwing water out of the fucking kitchen or do you go right to the source and fix it yeah. and then go to the fucking water that's overflowed? Yeah, you, actually. You, you got to fix education. Yeah. You need to be where parents can't be. You need to have an understanding that like just because children are being told one thing in a home mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that it's right truly so morals need to be implemented at school yeah and like it's like it's really sad and it's really scary but yeah. we'll get to a place where like i don't know the genuine minority like the minority of the minority of the minority of the minority are the white scumbags mm -hmm. that you end up stitching mm -hmm. on tiktok like mm -hmm. i really think we can get there i i think so too and i and you're right it is a lack of education it's in ignorance whether mm -hmm. it's intentional or not 
um, is really not my fucking problem. Is what they're I not exposed think. to it, right? No, and what truly. they're exposed to in their bubble is so fucking backwards and yeah. and generationally distorted and fucked up. Yeah, and they're not getting it where they should be getting it, which you know is at school and yeah. in culture and in what they're being fed in their algorithm. You know, yeah, it's just the most narrow scope yes. that they have, and and they are void of intersectionality, like mm-hmm. at all. And so, you know, I think that's the the key i think where they there's this misconception that they're like well why haven't you tried like talking to them blah 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 well first of all it doesn't fucking work believe it or not men who believe women are lesser than are not going to listen to women when they say hey you shouldn't do that you're right believe it or not but also like when speaking to your oppressor you have to speak in a language they understand a lot of times it's violence whether Mm -hmm. that's verbally physically whatever it may be and there's thousands hundreds of examples to, to prove that, that it only works when you use force by whatever nature that means, it's really specific to the person. So mine is force, like, it's like almost public humiliation and shame is the only thing that will make them stop. And it's not to say that it's going to change them, because a lot of times it doesn't, yeah, believe it or not. Down. Yeah, they'll, they'll double down or they play the victim, which is so rich because they say women can't take a joke i have hundreds of of examples to prove that men are just as incapable of taking jokes when they're at the butt of them right they just don't like that feeling and it's kind of it parallels with that study they did where they said like men and women if you're just operating within a gender binary they asked they pulled a bunch of men and women and asked them what their greatest fear is women it's it's being murdered men is humiliation (laughs) That's telling, isn't yeah, it? Totally. Because our priorities are very different. So when I make my videos, it's not to change them. I don't give a fuck about them. I don't know if that's clear or not by my <laughs> content. I really don't care about you. I don't care about your livelihood, let alone your feelings. But it's I I don't care to change them. I care to shame them. That's what I'm that's what my goal is, is to put them if if you wanna be a clown, I'll give you the stage, I'll pitch the tent. And I'll give you the nose. If you really want to be a clown, I'll, I'll give you the platform to be a clown publicly. And turns out a lot of them don't really like to do that when they're being seen by millions of people, which is crazy because if you talk crazy behind closed doors, you should be confident enough to say it with your whole chest if I were to platform it publicly. The interesting thing on that study, there's a bunch of things, but mm-hmm. like the two fears are connected. Yeah. Yeah. I think men feeling humiliated leads to the fear of women being murdered. Yeah. And I think men feeling humiliated is a generational problem and a societal mm-hmm. problem that stems back literally hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. And it's all it's all tied together. That's oh, what I try yes. to tell people all the time. It's like all of it is so like I kicked a completely different hornet's nest once because I stitched this dude that was talking about, you know, taking a woman out of her feminine era and putting her in her masculine era. And I, I personally believe that's veiled misogyny because it is the way that they describe it, the attributes that you attribute to male and feminine energies. First of all, you can't, first of all, gender's gender's not real. How the fuck are you going to gender energy? You can't like gender's (laughs) not, Hey guys, gender's not real. Uh, We made it up. And that's another thing that uh, sometimes I tell people, I'm like, you guys wonder why I don't do educational TikToks. You guys aren't ready for the conversation sometimes, especially men, the men that hate me. Um, they're not ready for the conversation because like gender being is a construct that was created. It's a, it's a consequence of colonization of white supremacy because my own culture included did not adhere to a gender binary prior to being colonized. So uh, that's why I say like once colonization happened, all of a sudden we have male, female, man, woman, right? You cook, I go to work and make money. And so I I told them I really don't like this kind of thinking because it's veiled misogyny. And I feel like men like that are far more dangerous than like a lunkhead who's like, lose weight, fatty. Like that guy, like he's easy pickings. You could pick him out of a lineup. It's super easy. Men who say things like, well, I just want to take you out of like this. I don't want you to feel like you have to be so masculine all the time. That's misogyny, but it's hidden. It's like, it's so deeply ingrained whether they know they're doing it or not. It's a trick. And so that's why I feel like I have to tell women, like, don't fall for that bullshit. 
It's misogyny. But like colonization turns to commercialization, which is what perpetuates genders to begin with, and right? Because too. yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred, hundred, hundred percent. Yeah. And like when you li- go back to like why that guy was even saying that to begin with, yeah, it's a society, it's a mm-hmm. capitalistic, it's a commercialization Truly. problem that's been implemented since the second. All of us, by the way, yeah. have been able to even retain what we're looking at. No, actually. And that's why I've talked. Sometimes when I talk about stuff like that and I get a little more detailed, uh, people are like, you're actually like a lot smarter than I thought you were. And that's why I'm like, just because I make silly, goofy jokes and I tell men to eat my shit doesn't mean that I'm a <laughs> dumb bitch. But that's another reason why I said, see, that's misogyny is assuming that I'm just stupid because I, I cuss and make fun of men yeah, when, and tell them to suck my wiener. Like When the reality is what you're doing is actually d- creating dumbing down the conversation so you can yeah. relate to them and so they can understand it. Yeah, it's it's to like make it more palatable yes. and, and, and enjoyable and entertaining, right? Because um, there are far more educated people than me on TikTok that their whole platform is educating people on the consequences of white supremacy and colonization, which I follow a ton of them. And that that helps foster my learning, too. And I always tell people it's like learning is free. Unlearning is also free. It's hard. Like I've talked about when I went on Emily Ratajkowski's podcast, I talked about unpacking your own internalized misogyny. Like we all have it. It's by no fault of our own. So I said on hers, and I'll say it here too, it's not your fault if you're born that way, like, or born into that, but it is your fault if you die that way, like, with those same beliefs. It's true. It's up to you to unpack them. That's our, I think, a job. It's, like, our duty as citizens contributing people to society. I agree, but I also think it takes people like you and others (laughs) in society to even host the conversation to begin with because I think a lot of people may not even know that they're carrying this around internally and they're unaware of their actions. Yeah, that's true too. And and I've had quite a few people of all gender identifying on the spectrum like tell me that you really helped me unpack some stuff that I feel like I still held, which I didn't intentionally want to hold, but I realized through watching your videos why it's problematic, why I should, you know, educate myself a little bit more. Um, even when I talked about the energy thing, I talked about how men are like, oh, I just want to take care of you. And some women took that as like, oh, you, you hate when women want to be stay at home moms, which I'm like, how did you get from that point? I never said that. And I said, I don't care if you want to, if you want to be a stay at home mom, by all means, I think that's a job in and of itself. It's just a much harder job than I have. I could tell you that much. Mm -hmm. But I talked about how like women who, who choose to do that by their own volition. That's great women who fall into that because their male partners are like, well, I want to take care of you. That's different. Right. And I just said, as long as you're choosing to do it on your own accord, like it's consensual by all means, bitch, go off. You know what I mean? I don't care what you want to do. That's the whole point of my platform. I want you to be free to do whatever you want to do without the opinions of men who don't matter, like factoring in at all to your decisions. And I feel like, I even talked about how like men like that who say that shit, ask them how they feel about women who primarily date for money, who only date for money because something tells me they don't like women like that, but they're so like, oh, I, women should be at home. Yeah. That's women falling into their gender role. Literally, they're staying home, staying cute, staying fit, right? And being arm candy. And they just want you to give them $10,000 a month, right? That's what they want. And men hate that too because I've stitched hundreds of men who said that too. Gold deer. You know what I mean? It's like you can't win. There's no winning if with men like that. God, if you do not want a partner who has the ability to make their own decisions and be independent, Truly. then you are a flawed human being that <laughs> is wishing for a really wretched reality for yourself no, and for those sure. around you. Because ultimately, Holding somebody back from accomplishing what their full potential could be no, creates this intense disdain mm-hmm. that is going to seep through in everything that you do. Mm-hmm. By trying to make somebody fit a mold that you've created without their consent or mm-hmm. through just manipulation is, you know what you're going to do? You're going you're gonna to ruin your life and the person you're fucking with. Yeah, okay? actually. And then you're going to lead to divorce ruining your fucking kids' lives. It's It's just such a... It just goes down. It trickles down. It affects everybody. And by the way, if you're that asshole who wants somebody to like, you want to just take care of somebody, then you should be looking at women who are only looking to date for money. Yeah. Your priorities are aligned. I said, if that's what you want, there's plenty of of women who want that. Like, and then it works. That's why I'm like, you know, what's crazy is like, we have free will so we can do 
whatever we want <laughs> for the most part. But like we can make our own choices. So if you're a woman who only wants to date for money, by all means, bitch. And then if you're a man who has a lot of money and wants someone to, to wait on and dote on and like spoil, by all means, there's plenty of them. That's why I always think men who complain about gold diggers, they have no gold. <laughs> they have no money. Yeah. What are you worried about? You're worried about other men's money? That's crazy. Yeah, Stack they're... your own bread before you worry about somebody else's. Oh, that's humi- crazy. humiliation. Yeah, well, that's, I can't tell you how many, <laughs> how many men I've stitched that are like, see, this is why you got to worry about these gold. What? Uh, show me a W-2. I want to see how much money you made last year. <laughs> and I'll tell you if you should be worried about gold diggers, bitch. Don't worry about it. I promise you're okay. You're safe. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Women like that only date like high echelon men, like, top tier like money you would never even be you can't even think of the number you can't even imagine the number and like women only date men like that so they're not looking at you working at jiffy lube like i promise you're good i promise you're safe (laughs) man works at pavilions and he's like i gotta make sure i do a prenup don't worry you can't even afford the lawyer that would have to draft the prenup relax you're fine nobody's stalking you out no i promise you're okay like nobody's case in the local grocery store you know what's so funny even when i was in college before this industry i ran in so many circles with women who dated the richest like Mm. most like privileged like talented men in the world and they were a regular girl like 19 20 years old who were just like i just kind of want to go on a really fancy dinner just get online Turns out men are easy. Men mm. are so easy to get their attention, especially men with means. So they were dating. Believe it or not, women know who has money and who doesn't. <laughs> Believe it or not. So <laughs> you're okay, I promise. <laughs> They're so worried. They're so worried. What what sacrifices? What were you about to say? <laughs> no, I was just wondering if you've ever regretted anything you've said online or stitched and said about someone um, or felt bad afterwards. No. <laughs> I mean, about the men the men that I've stitched, no. Do you vet them before you choose to yeah, I do. them? Yeah, I do vet them. Um, I will say one time, one time I did make fun of a dude, but it wasn't on TikTok. I like, he wrote like a mean comment on one of my things and turns out I misunderstood the meanness, I guess. And I apologized to him. I was like, my bad, dude. Like, and he was like, no, it's okay. And he said, sorry to me too. He's like, I'm sorry I wrote that. Like, I get why you misinterpreted it. And we squashed it. We love civil dif- discourse. Right, yeah. And I publicly posted it too. So it wasn't anything private. But I did post like, hey, man. like, Or, hey, all. Like, I made a mistake. Um, he, and he made a mistake. And we both, we met in the middle. And we both deleted the comments and stuff. So, like, that's really the only thing I've ever been where I'm like, ah, like, I misread it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can't interpret tone or anything through comments. But I feel like I'm a lot more careful now um, who I sitch, like, and all that stuff. Because you just got to be aware of, like, who they are. And there are some men I, like, who have said, like, truly heinous, awful things about me that I choose not to talk about at all. Because I just feel like there's another level to it that I'm not willing to touch. And I'm like, you can... Oh. Scream into the void about me. That's fine. I don't, I don't want to involve myself with that because yeah. Jeez. I also feel like there's probably a bunch of guys now that want to get your attention, so they say ridiculous shit, hoping you'd stitch them. Oh yeah, all the time. They tag me themselves sometimes, and it's they're like, like no, they're like, come and give me fatty, and I'm like, the views are low. <laughs> the views are low. They're coming wandering into my den trying to poke a bear. You know what I mean? Like they're like, mm, I'm bored. Uh, those men I intentionally don't stitch either because. I'm like you. I don't. I don't stitch men who beg me. So relax. Get off your knees. It's okay. <laughs> what sacrifices have you had to make to like build this path that you're currently on? Um, I'd say the biggest one is probably just privacy. Like uh, any sense of boundary. I've been like talking about this in therapy. Me just constantly referencing therapy. Um, my, my therapist watches this. I, I feel like my, my idea of boundaries, my understanding of them was like, because I'm so confrontational and I'm so like upfront about my feelings and I'm very upfront about if something upsets me or bothers me. And I always have been, I feel like I associated that with boundaries. Like I'm like, Oh, I'm so good at holding boundaries, which I am to an extent. I'm, I'm, a, I'm really good at boundaries to an extent, but like when it comes to my platform, when it comes to people who love me. I'm not very good at holding boundaries, um, especially when I'm uncomfortable um, in public. 
and I feel like my boundaries are being crossed, I, I never really say anything, which I would say is the biggest sacrifice, which sounds like, oh, I'm so like, oh my God, I'm in my house. I work from home. But like, I'm. it's not hard being an influencer. It's not hard. Please don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I think that there's like a price you pay. It's a very small one compared to other jobs that you could have. But um, the the price that you pay to do this for a living I had many jobs. I had so many jobs prior to like doing this. I was a very, very, very normal person prior to this happening to me. So no amount of jobs you could ever have can prepare you for the things that you struggle with when you have this job. Like it's very different, which is why I think it's important as a creator to make other friends who are creators to kind of lean on each other and, and ask for advice and like I've asked for so much advice from other creators that I admire and look up to and have been in the game for so long because there are some things I just can't, I don't, I don't know how to handle. Like, I just don't know because I've never done this before. It's like, it's so different. And so my family too, is they're learning as learning as you go. Because it's more, it's, it affects more than just you. Yeah. It's everybody. Yeah. Safety as a whole, I think is a big sacrifice that I've had to make. But when my platform really started blowing up, um, I had a very serious conversation with my boyfriend, with my family about what it means and what happens next. You know, like how comfortable are we um, being a front facing family? Like how comfortable are we using our first and last names? Like it's too late for me. But like, you know, it, you know, how comfortable do we feel with this? Because I. The thing I would never want is my family to ever feel forced into being public, into being a public facing family, because I would never want like that to bleed into my relationships with my family because we're all so close. So I feel like having that conversation was really important because this life isn't for everyone. Like there are some people who just like I would never they would never, ever, ever want to be an influencer, or famous, a celebrity, whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, I would say that's probably the biggest sacrifice I've had to make. I mean, you're also talking about, like, real topics consistently. Yeah. You're talking about things that really touch people's core. Yeah. And I, I just want to highlight, like, you know, when, and you do it from a personal vantage point, you, you do have the ability to, like, do you touch pop, like, like not pop culture, but news, right? You'll, like, talk about shit that's going on. Yeah, I do. I, I have quite a few times. I use my platform as frequently as I can, especially, I try to use it, too, as carefully as I can, so as... I'm not overstepping That's in spaces. I try to be as cognizant as possible um, to where I can be best used as an ally or as a front facing yeah. voice. Um, it really just depends. But, you know, I've been very vocal about certain things and that I believe in that I feel is important. Like I'm wearing a sweater from change today that says at night, I thank God for trans women, period, <laughs> uh, which which I personally do. Um, which we love, but I think there are certain things that I make sure that I'm vocal about, but I'm not too overzealous and like overstepping or, or overshadowing other voices, if that makes sense. No, hundred percent. Yeah. Do you feel like you've made your dad proud? I think so. I think my whole family has been just unbelievably supportive of everything and they're so proud. But I think, um, when I got the billboard for the comment section, um, you know, in, of fucking the 10 i think it is I me mean, not even knowing where it is it's huge um, it's on the reef yeah it's like that the three thing billboard um that made my family very emotional when we went and saw it because i'm an indigenous person so i'm someone that's my dad's last name like seeing my dad's last name like up there is like crazy and i don't think my dad ever thought that we would he knew we would accomplish great and wonderful things but i don't think he ever thought that we would be able to platform our name like that and like last names are a big deal in our community and so you know having having my last name and being proud of it and and being able to show it and show that I'm like a proud Samoan woman is like the best feeling in the world so I'd say he's pretty proud of me yeah so <laughs> to a certain degree we've accomplished some of the unfinished business that we absolutely were looking to you want to know something funny when I got fired <laughs> from the NFL <laughs> Uh, my dad was the first person I talked to because, like, I tried to call my mom. She didn't answer. I tried to call my sister. She didn't answer. So I was like, fine, I'll call my dad. I'll call my dad. And I, I tell him what happened. And the first thing he said to me was, congratulations. Because <laughs> my dad knew I was miserable. I was so unhappy. My whole family did. And then he was like, what do you mean? This is, like, the best day ever. And he's like, well, now two of us have been fired. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which I'm like, twin. <laughs> they really don't want us over there. So, all right, I'll take the hint. It's, it's, so, it's fine. It's She's fine. fine. Trust me, I'm doing much better. So, I'm very thankful that I got fired. So. Do you understand the parasocial relationship between people and those they view on the internet? Do you feel like you want to understand it? I, I will. I do understand it. Um, I get it to an extent, but I don't feel like, I mean, I was a big fangirl too. Like I was like a diehard Jonas Brothers fan. I had a question about that. Oh my gosh, you're, please. You roast short guys all the time. I know, and, Brothers- they're, and they're teeny, teeny, tiny. Yeah. They're teeny, teeny, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. And that's okay. It's okay. For them, it's okay. And Sophie Turner is tall. Like, and she's yes. my tall queen, my queen of the North. But um, that's why I say, my short guy jokes are only applicable to men who fucking suck. And that's why <laughs> the only men who get offended are men who fucking suck. Like, that's it's true. Like, it, it's so funny because we, my boyfriend and I have a friend. And he's very, very, very normal. Works a normal job. He's, like, super cool guy. Very, very funny. Normal as hell. But? he No, he, I never realized how tall he was. Because he's not the worst. Does that make sense? I never realized how short he's like five six, five five, mm. and he's told me like I'm fucking short, and I'm like, are you? Like, cause I I'm not kidding. I spend a lot of time with this dude. I stand next to him all the time. I never realized, and he, mind you, has no problem with women, mm. none at all. He's fighting them off with a stick, like he's drowning in puss, <laughs> all the time, no matter where we go. Because he doesn't give a shit. It's not like a big part of his personality. Like your height does not become a factor until you become the worst. Mm. Then I'm going to be mean to you about how tall you are. Because if you're awful or you're, and at the same time, your eye level with my nipples, we, I'm not letting you raise your voice to me. (laughs) Like, no, no, no. Because according to these, like, and that's the same thing with men I make fun of is like, they are so hard pressed about these beauty standards and inflicting them and, and imposing them on women when they themselves don't even meet them. Oh yeah. According to a male beauty standard, like you're supposed to have hair till you die and you're supposed to be over five eleven, but none of them are. And yet they're still inflicting all of these harsh standards on women. They're like, well, you can't be fat and you can't be this and you can't be that. And then I'm like, well, then you can't be short. And they're like, we'll see too far. <laughs> We've gone too far. See, it's too far now. See, now you're just mean. The, the goalposts always move. You know what I mean? And it all stems from humiliation. It all it stems does. From it's all the same. And again, beauty standards are, they're Eurocentric in their very nature. <coughs> they're born out of white supremacy. Like, mm-hmm. that's why I said the call's coming from inside the house. Like, if you're mad, take it up with your ancestors. I don't know. Get a Ouija board. Ask them why they did that. Like, I don't know. I don't know why your ancestors did that. Because those aren't the beauty standards in my culture. You know what I mean? Like, what's beautiful in my culture is not what's what the American beauty standards are. Yeah. Right. So like we have very different perspectives of what's beautiful. And I think that beauty is like subjective. It's like specific to the person who the who, attractiveness depends on you. Right. Totally. And so I, I would love to live in a world where beauty was defined more just b- b- less based on appearance and more yeah. based on quality of human. No, truly. And yeah. a lot of times that does have a lot to do with it. Like I did a video recently because this guy was like, these are double standards with women. Like he's saying all this misogynistic shit. And he's like, well, if I do this, then then I can't have a girlfriend. If I do this, then I'm misogynistic. And I was like, or you suck. Like, if you're single and you have all of these wonderful things, like you're tall, you have great hair, you have money, you're in shape, and you're still single, ask yourself why. Like, the list is really short, if you mm. think about it. Like, it's you. Like, it's your, yeah. it's your personality. Like, I think it's when you open your mouth, people are upset. That's probably why. Yeah, but that same person is convincing themselves that they're the one exactly. who doesn't want a relationship. Exactly. And they're also, they're convincing themselves that they're not the problem. Yeah, 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 totally. Like, self-confidence is important, but self-awareness is much more useful in oh. the world, I feel like. Ah. So it's important to be confident, but it's also important to be aware of, like, what you say and how it impacts people and how your your presence impacts people. Like, if when, when people say, like, oh, so-and-so's coming, and everyone goes, ugh. Is that the guy you want to be? Like, you want to be the guy that's, like, a chore to hang out with? No. And then they wonder, like, well, women don't like me probably because they're a bunch of whores. That's, like, what they think in their head. Instead of being, like, maybe I'm insufferable. Like, maybe I'm just so unpleasant to be around. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Ask Taylor Swift. She said it. 
But that's another thing too. It's like he like of, of all the things you're like, well, why don't people like me? I don't know. Maybe it's you. I don't know. Then I think like, do you know how many there are so many short men, there are so many like ugly men, there's so many broke men who have relationships that are filled with love and totally. support and empathy. And you're amazing and awesome and don't have one? It's you. That's a you problem, babe. How did you f- meet your boyfriend? High school. Well, we met in high school, didn't date in high school. So we've known each other for like 15 years, almost 15 Whoa. years. Yeah, but we've only been dating for six, so we're going on seven. Well, wait, so were you friends the whole time or what? Yeah, yeah, we were friends. Like, we were cool in high school. Like, we ran in the same social circle, I would say. Got but it. we never dated in high school. But did you lose touch post high school and then come back together? No, not even. Like, we would get... <laughs> We would get like lunch, like fucking colleagues, like once a year. <laughs> I'd come home from school because he went to college locally and I went to school in Hawaii. So like I lived in Hawaii for like six years. And when I w- lived out there, I would come home and then we would get like lunch or breakfast. And then we'd be like, see you next year. Like we wouldn't even <laughs> see good, each other. good handshake. Yeah, on your like way. a firm business handshake. And then we'd leave like so we were just buddies for a long time. And then. When I graduated from high school or from college, when I graduated from college and I moved home, um, that's when he hit me up like, oh, we should get lunch. And I'm like, "Mm." and then I was like, "Okay, fine. And then we got lunch and then jokes on me. I'm in love now. So (laughs) (laughs) he really got me. (laughs) And that was in 2017. Yes. Yes. That's when we started dating. So that's it's been a long time. I know you talk about this online sometimes like. Why do you think people always ask, like, are you getting married? Oh, yeah. I mean, because, again, I mean, how annoying is it? But, like, patriarchal. Yeah. yeah, it's because I feel like men, too, like, it's, like, goes in waves. Like, they're, like, this fat bitch is probably single. Wrong. Well, her boyfriend's probably ugly. Wrong. Well, her boyfriend's probably short. Also wrong. <laughs> and then they're, like, well, still hasn't married you yet. I'm, like, well, okay, you got me there. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. You got me on the ropes, man. What am I going to do? Um, but I'm like, I don't want to get married right now because I have a lot of things like Virgo on, on a list that I want to check off before I get married and weddings are expensive too. Mm -hmm. And like the wedding that I'm dreaming up, like we're both someone, I got a big ass family. So like I, we're looking at a lot of people (laughs) coming to that wedding and now, and I have a ton of friends that I would want there too. And like, I don't want my parents to have to pay for it either. I want to pay for it. So I just feel like we could get married now, but like, why? Yeah. When the time is right. Yeah. When the time's right, it's right. And we'll do it then. We have like tangible items on a list. We want to cross out um, before. Well, I want to buy my parents a home. Um, I want to buy his parents a home. I'm like halfway there. Uh, And there's like a lot of things I want to establish. Like I really want to plant roots kind of thing. And then I want to, um, get married but also planning a wedding takes a long time and I feel like I'm so busy right now like now is just not the time to do that but we have no qualms about getting married we're absolutely getting married he told me he wanted to marry me like three months into dating we weren't even official yet so he's like well, I'm for sure gonna marry you and I was like period <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> uh, so that's, I think people are just like, get married. You guys have been together for a million years. But even when I posted a video, like responding to that, there were so many women in my comments that were like, I was with my, I was with my boyfriend for like 10 years before we got married because it's just like, even my parents, like my parents had my sister and I and still weren't married. And my, that was my mom's choice. Like my mom was like, I don't want you to marry me just because we have children together. I want you to marry me because you want to marry me, not because we have kids. Like, that's no reason to get married. And I feel like that's another reason why I have that mentality because I'm like, we're not in a rush. And when the time is right, it's right. If we'll do it, we'll do it. Why why would you rush something like that? And also you don't need marriage to make a lifelong commitment to somebody. No, truly. Like, that's another thing too. Like, some people don't even, never want to get married. And And that's fucking cool too. And I don't blame you. And my boyfriend uh, and I really want to marry each other, but just because we just love each other so much, we just want to make the commitment to each other. But you don't need a paper and a ring to do that. And we've proven that. So 
You Fuck know. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally going to get married, but you don't need <laughs> to get Well, married. you need to find someone first. <laughs> oh, read. T- I'll find you someone, Zach. You think? Yeah. You, you got somebody? I'm such a great wingman. Really? I mean, honestly, I'm not joking. Like, set me up. I'm not joking either, bit. I'm <laughs> not joking, bitch. <laughs> Please. I'll I'm, for sure do it. I'm genuinely, I'm not, like, to say desperate would probably be accurate, actually. Um, I don't want to say desperate. But desperate. <laughs> but I am. Yeah. Yeah. Eager. Yeah, looking, actively looking. <laughs> Eager and actively Yeah, looking. just out there. Just I love that. Mm-mm. Let's do it. I'm mm. such a good matchmaker. Prove it. Okay, okay. He said prove it. I will. By the way, we're going to put a link in the description below so you can subscribe to your Spotify exclusive podcast, <laughs> the comment section. That is a big no. deal, right? Yeah, it's a huge deal. I feel like we worked on it for so long, like the deal, you know, it's like, you guys know, it's like it's so tedious in the yeah. interim. You're like, oh my God, how exciting. But you won't see the like results of it till like months down mm-hmm. the line. So I think we worked on this deal for like six months. Wow. And then um, once it really started rolling out, like Spotify's incredible. Like they're such a great team and um, everything that they had planned and rolled out for me. And like we had like a little refresh of like, you know, the artwork and everything. And it was so seamless and it went so like the transition was so perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better team. So once it started rolling out and I saw like the billboard and stuff, I was like, I think this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Which it is. So um, very exciting. Yeah. It's been really f- fucking cool lately. I'm super excited about it. And it, from here, mm-hmm. the sky's the limit, sister. Yeah. And a book. And a book. Uh, the book is big. Yeah. The book is. The book is crazy because my manager um, was like, I think you should write a book. He spends way too much time with me. Uh, He hears me talk all the time. I feel sorry for him, him and my agent. And um, he was like, I think you should write a book. And I was like, you think? Because I I feel like I have like little quips and isms and stuff. But like, he's like, no, I think you have something bigger and greater to offer the world. And a book is the way that you do that. And he's he's like, let me let me like... uh, set up some meetings and stuff. So I had a couple of meetings uh, with uh, literary agents and the literary agents I have now are incredible. It's like so amazing. And um, it's funny cause they tell you like, you know, um, the early stages of a book and stuff, it's a slow, it can be a really slow process. Like it can be a slow when they get to the point of like buying and shopping it around and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, I don't know anything. So I'm, I'm cool either way. Um, and that was probably in around like August, September, uh, by December, I had like almost 30 meetings with people who wanted to buy it. And, um, you had to write a certain amount first or what'd you do? Yeah. We, you put together like a proposal. So it's almost like a chapter and like an overview of what the book is going to be about. It's like comes in a pretty little package and you kind of like shop it around. That's like kind of how the process works. And, um, I had like 25 meetings. I was in New York for like a week and I, sick met with a bunch of different publishers and they were all amazing. Um, and then I, you know, we ended up partnering with uh, Questlove and his new imprint, which is just an, just crazy. It's crazy to think about. He is a genius, like mm-hmm. a literal genius actually, but also he's so business savvy. He's so like, he's just so far ahead of everybody. Like everything he sees, like the vision he has is incomparable. And I feel like, I love to surround myself with people like that who make me want to level up and get better and evolve. And he's already there. So like, I'm like just trying to catch up with him. <laughs> so the fact that he was interested in, the, in at, at all was such an honor, but um, yeah, getting to partner with him. What, is, like, what a great collaborator. Yeah. And, and just, something new for him, new for you, but yeah. also fucking cool. It's so, it's so fucking cool. Like, and he came to the meetings and I sat <laughs> with him and he talked to me a lot about, why he liked my my uh, proposal like what he saw for me like and he told me like I think one of the things he mentioned was like he's like I like that you're so you're a disruptor like you're someone who who no one's ever seen before who's done something completely different and and you're making a name for yourself and that's what I like about you and I was like period <laughs> uh <laughs> someone's gonna make you feel smart it's Questlove he made me feel really smart um and so I think with him being um part of my book publishing process is just like such a fucking honor like it's just insane so and um it's his brand new imprint and it's just really oh my gosh such an honor you are a disruptor though 
trying. You disrupt by like shining a very intense light on truth. Yeah. <laughs> and you do it in a way that's palatable for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. It's really cool. Thank you. I'm and trying, man. <laughs> it's a slow and steady process. It is, yeah. And with every video you post, you reach new people, you yeah. educate people, and we move a little bit further in the right yeah. direction. I think so. I think too, right when I right before I got signed to an agency, I already had the platform. I had like over a million at that point, but I had no real interest from agencies or anything like that. I didn't have any brands or anything. I was just making content. And I remember telling my boyfriend, I was like, I was really nervous because I was like, what if I, I mean, I love doing this. And I told him this is like a passion of mine now, but I feel like what if brands never want to work with me because I'm so controversial, right? They, they, <laughs> they see me as such a controversial creator because I stitch terrible things and I say mean shit and, you know. I just was afraid that no one was ever going to want to work with me. But I'm I'm unwilling to compromise who I am because, again, I'm a Virgo and I know it all. But also, like, I just, like, don't feel like I should have to shrink myself in order to, like, be no. brand friendly, right? Because I'm super not brand friendly at all. And um, my boyfriend told me, he's like, well, I mean, like, do you want to work with brands that wouldn't want to work with you if they found what you did controversial? Because what you're doing is not controversial. And I was like not you being smarter than me <laughs> fuck <laughs> um and so i was like nah you right you right no you right i was just like down bad for a second but i'm okay and um literally a month later i got signed and then like 3 months after that i grew like 2 million in one month and then i grew 3 million and then and then everything then i got my show and then it's just like it all unraveled all at once so I'm just glad I like stuck the course, steadied the course. Yeah, but, but but stay on that course. And I yeah. think it's going to get harder and harder for you <laughs> yeah. to like not compromise exactly who you are to fit molds that are presented to you. But yeah. ultimately like being exactly who you are, it's exactly why people watch and relate to you and listen yeah. to you. And it's exactly why you're here and yeah. it's working. And the second you deviate from that, like they know that everybody's going to know. Mm -hmm. And you know what event it's going to take time. It's going to be a gradual change, but you're going to see it in the data, right? Yeah. And you're going to like lie to yourself about it. But like, yeah. now nah, I'm telling you, yeah. Being exactly who you are, changing for no one, unless mm -hmm. it's a change that you feel is right for you. It's a part yeah. of your organic evolution as a yeah. person. Yeah. As Drew Afualo, <laughs> you, you shouldn't do it. Only if you yeah. feel like it's exactly what you're meant to be doing. Oh my gosh, thank you, Zach Singh. I appreciate you. <laughs> I, I, well, I appreciate you. I, I just, when people come, when you meet people who are just so effortlessly themselves and that, 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 that has the ability to transcend mediums and really penetrate the consciousness and really have an impact like yeah the fame that comes along with that can, can jeopardize exactly who you are yeah but jeopardizing exactly who you are can ultimately jeopardize what you've built and why you're there no truly i feel i feel that's probably not to loop it back to the beginning but i i feel like that's a big reason too why i keep my family so close to me I was, yeah. yeah and i've also made it a point too to like because uh, I've gotten a lot of offers for, like, reality TV um, because my, like, personality is so, like, that right? They're, like, put her on reality TV. And your family's big. And yeah. There's, there's yeah, a thousand and different storylines. Yeah, exactly. And I've made it a point to say no. And I've told them, like, my family dynamic, like, my interpersonal relationships with my family, how we are at home, that's the last thing I have. Like, I have nothing left. I've, I've given all of myself. I give so much of myself publicly like to to my fans to other people to the shows like everything I give so much of myself I feel like that's the one thing I have left that that is normal like that makes me feel normal that makes me feel like a regular human um as cheesy as that sounds um so I've always been like no I have no interest in reality tv because I I don't know I just don't I just want to if I'm at home I want to be at home you know what I mean and I, I don't want to feel like I have to be on or perform or but you, you don't need funny. you don't need that to build fame or notoriety or no, community truly, yeah. or financially like that's like you don't need that. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's like it's that's, one of those things that's like could I do it? Yeah, but should I do it? No. Sis, it's the lowest hanging fruit. Anybody, yeah. you know what I mean? Like Yeah, why, why, and it's hard to get away from reality TV, I feel like too. Once you once you start, you can't stop. And so I I don't want to open that door ever. But I love that my my family keeps me so humble, bitch. It's not even funny. Like it's not even funny. My brother is in school still, and he, like, told me, oh, yeah, some girl was talking about you, or talking about TikTok, and I was like, my sister has a TikTok. Mind you, I'm well into my career at this point, and this was, like, last year, and then uh, 
I go, oh, really? And he goes, yeah. I told her, like, oh, my sister has a TikTok. And she goes, oh, what's her name on TikTok? Like, her handle? He goes, nah, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, it's my first and last name. And then he goes, how was I supposed to know that? I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know. Fuck me, I guess. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Even my grandpa, like, my grandpa, I talked to him about TikTok. And he's like, your mom tells me you're, like, making videos. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, on TikTok? I go, yeah. He goes, I have a TikTok. I'm like, oh, word? What are you watching there? He goes, ah, just random stuff. And I go, he goes, yeah, but your mom tells me it's doing really well. I'm like, yeah, I think so. And then he goes, I haven't watched any of it. <laughs> I go, why not? And he goes, I don't need to see all that. <laughs> Girl, what? <laughs> but you're already on TikTok. <laughs> That's how I was like, oh, so you're actively choosing not to watch me. Okay, got it. You're avoiding, <laughs> you didn't have, yeah. Yeah, you're avoiding me on purpose. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, for sure. I thought it was something bad, but no, for sure. Someone was like, oh, does he just not have TikTok because he's old? I'm like, no, bitch, he has TikTok. He just, like, doesn't watch me. <laughs> like, he chooses not to watch me. He doesn't want his, his version of you to be tainted by the he's TikTok version. He's literally like, I don't need to see all that. I'm all, what the, what's all that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? He's like, ah, oh, just, you know. Ah. You know how old men just be like, ah. Yeah. They just say noises, and you're like, no, for sure. Cool. <laughs> Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, my sister told me I posted a video the other day. My sister goes, man, that was the funniest one you posted in a while. <laughs> I post every day. What do you mean by that? So how long is a while? Oh, six what months. What do you mean by that? She goes, the funniest one I've seen in a while. I'm like, oh, okay. No, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So I'll never get a big head in my own family. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. Yeah, but that's, I mean, it's healthy and exactly what you want that's what i need i yeah. need it i need it so desperately i like i crave it almost um my mom too my mom's so real my mom will tell me the realest shit ever like uh i auditioned for something i can't say what it is but i auditioned for something and they said can she sing and i said no right <laughs> no she can't uh but she's very interested and they were like okay um, and then fast forward six months later, they send me the audition materials. They're like, oh, I need this by Friday. It's Wednesday. I need it by Friday. Also, I need you to sing one minute acapella. Girl, what the fuck? <laughs> I told you I can't sing. And I was like, all right, fine. No, for sure. I can't sing, bitch, like at all. Like that's one of the things, me being a Virgo and I'm like, if I watch someone rock climb, like bare knuckle rock climb, I'd be like, I could do that. Singing, I'm like, I can't do that. That's like the one thing I know for a fact I can't do. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. I've made my peace with it. So I I asked one of my cousins to help me because he's a really talented singer. I'm like, help me out, yeah? And he's like, yeah, no, for sure. And so he's, he's like, I'll just record you every time. And I'm like, cool. And he's recording me. And then he sometimes would be like, okay, we're going to stop. That was really bad. That was really bad. I was like, okay, cool. And when I told my mom, because she said she could hear me, she goes, it wasn't that bad. It sounded actually okay. I was like, oh, slay. Oh, period, bitch. Because my mom would tell me if I was god awful, she'd be like, "I hated that, but I love your confidence." <laughs> like that's what my mom would tell me if I was terrible, <laughs> which is okay. I feel like you need that, especially get, as an influencer. Did you get the part? I don't know yet. Oh wow! Someone are tells you, me I sent that and they blocked me. But are you gonna star alongside The Rock in the live action Moana? I don't know, but if they are in, just girl, <laughs> hit my line. I will be in there. I'll be a background character, bitch. I don't care. <laughs> I'll literally be the boat she stands on and sails the oceans. I will lay in the water. I don't care what it is. Make me the hook. Like, literally, that the rock holds. Please, God. I'll do anything. I'll li Someone, oh my God, this is not a joke. Someone literally wrote into my Two Idiot Girls podcast. They were like, you should play the grandma. Girl, what the fuck? How old do you think I am? Peace all love, Grandma Tala, but she's old. Like, she's a grandma. What the fuck? not even 30 yet <laughs> my fans are my biggest ops sometimes <laughs> they keep you humble they yeah. really do sometimes people ask me like oh have men who hate you said anything ever that's that kind of stuck with you and i said one time one guy did but it wasn't even a hater of mine like he just like made a comment because like someone tweeted about me and it was a nice tweet twitter's rancid but it was a nice tweet she loves me but she screenshot a really terrible picture of me and he called me something. It was like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It was like Pot of Greed. And I looked, Fuck. look it up if you want. But I looked it up and the screenshot in that Pot of Greed thing, I was like, damn, you kind of got me. <laughs> that one will stick with me. And it has. It was almost two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? Like the picture that she screenshot oh of me. I, I looked see. just like that thing. And I was like, you really got me there. But he wasn't even like trying to be mean. I think he was just like, 
pot of green, which but, is even worse. Yes. <laughs> That's it's almost worse. Get like it. someone who's like has no investment, but is like, hey, you're a big fucko, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, go back to their daily life, girl. I just gave you zero point one seconds of my no, existence. Truly, to tell you no, truly, no, truly. Like my own, my own fans though are the funniest. They say the funniest shit. They're sometimes funnier than me, uh, but sometimes they they send me love and it doesn't feel like love. Like they say things like, "Oh my god!" Like I had one girl. I tell this story all the time because I'm still like it will stick with me for my like for life. Like this is in my frontal lobe forever. Unfortunately. But she was like, you know, I love your platform. I love your content. Like, you're so great. She's awesome. And she goes, also, uh, I feel so represented by you. Mind you, we're not the same race. So I'm like, what does that mean? And she's like, because um, I've never seen a creator with a platform that's also wall-eyed. And I said, hold on. <laughs> Wait, what? Wall-eyed. Because all I know is cockeyed or, like, cross-eyed. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's something like that. Wait, what? Bitch, I look it up. You know what? animal is wall-eyed a horse <laughs> because their eyes are on They're opposite so sides of their head and they can look two different directions i said girl what <laughs> who's we like she said we're wall-eyed that makes me feel good who's we who's we bitch and she said it with all the love in the world like she she was like love you love you so much love you and i was i googled it i said Girl, <laughs> y'all want me dead. Y'all want me dead. I the way I'm like, you guys are my ops. Like for real, some of you are my ops. Wall eyed, Love you wall eyed girl. Someone called me cock eyes too once, and I was like, eyes, both eyes. They want me dead. Have uh, you thought about stand up? I have actually. I've thought about it. You'd be good at that. I think <laughs> you'd be real fucking good at thank that. Thank you, thank you. I've tried. I think like. I've actually had quite a few like actual stand up comedians. Like they came and saw we did live shows um in January for two idiot girls, which is essentially stand up on the road. But um <laughs> we did a lot of crowd work and stuff. Like we talked to them and made jokes and stuff and I had some really amazing comedians that I admire so much, like Caleb Heron. He's wow. just so funny and unbelievably funny. But he came to one of my shows and he was like, You should for sure do stand up. Like you should try it. Like I think you have something there. I'm a little nervous to do stand up. Sometimes I think like being funny and doing stand up, they're two different things. Like mm. some people can be hilarious, but that it doesn't is translate. Mm -hmm. So that's my fear. I have no shame in being like, I might not work in that medium. And stand up is such an art form that I feel like I don't want to taint mm. or taint it or like my reputation of being funny by trying to do stand up and being like, mm. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, I think I so. <laughs> I think it's like, I know my strengths. So maybe I could learn and get good at it, but. I I'm not too proud to be like that might not be my vibes but it's okay i'd love to see you host a weekly talk show where you do <laughs> politics you. and culture and society period shit. yeah i would love that i put think that's, that's great put it on msnbc they only got old people over there <laughs> <Who watches laughs> yeah just throw though? me in there well you put it on there you put on that peacock <laughs> thing they got the cock yeah. that's what we call it yeah. <laughs> my sister said she got that from smartless like the podcast ah they call it the cock. So that's what we call it. <laughs> yeah, put you on the cock. Well, yeah, it's on the cock. That's huge. <laughs> I, I mean, huge. the cock is, they, they have a lot, of, it is a big cock. It is. It is. There's a lot of content on there. It is, and so is mine. So there you go. <laughs> the question is, who's bigger? <laughs> Damn, I can't believe some girl came up to you and said that she felt represented because. Because the, my eyes are on either side of my head. I know. Yeah, your eyes look in the center of your face yeah, to me. they do. Listen. I think so, <laughs> but it's crazy what people make you think about yourself when you say, then you start looking at yourself and you're like, am I, I like the fuggliest person ever exists? Oh. Cause some of you see me in a way that I'm like, <laughs> yeah, everything, I mean? everything becomes different. <laughs> I'm trying like to be honest, like a few weeks ago, somebody stopped me while I was in the middle of a phone conversation to tell me that they are also a 28 year old virgin <laughs> who finally <laughs> felt ident like f felt seen and understood by somebody. <laughs> Uh, it was 7.30 in the morning on Santa Monica Boulevard, and I was said, on the, I don't need this right now. I literally thought it was a homeless person accosting me, and I kept running, and they touched me, and oh I was God. like, what am I taking my headphones off to? Mm. And it was this, this, this I was going to call him a kid, this man telling me that uh, uh, he wanted to thank me for being honest and open about being a virgin because he is a virgin, too, who is also pansexual. And he's like, and yeah. That. Thank you so much. And then everybody on the fucking conference call heard the whole interaction. <laughs> you're like, they're like, Zach, you're still unmuted. Yeah. Zach, you're Zach, still unmuted. Zach, Zach. Uh, 
Fucking <laughs> Zach. Uh, not as bad as Walleye, but like. Girl, I get. I have people. This is not a joke. I get this every time I'm out in public and someone sees me. At least one of them will say, "You're so much prettier in person," which means I'm a big fuggo online. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if they hear that when they tell me, but I'm always like, "Oh." No, for sure. That's what, like, what do you that, say? You're like, thank you. Yeah, you thank say you. Nothing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I'm like, am I do I just film so horridly? Like, do I photograph terribly? Like, I'm someone they would show and they'd be like, she just doesn't photograph well. Sometimes I genuinely wish I could enter somebody else's mind and just sit behind their <laughs> eyes and see how the fuck they see me. And sometimes I don't want to see it. Yeah. Don't well, tell me. I just think none of my business. Like well, when people say, What do you want your superpower to be? And they're like, I wish I could read minds, not me. Well, well, I'm, I am caught between like lie to me and tell me exactly what I want to hear, <laughs> yeah. and then me wanting to be inside your brain and figure right. out exactly what you're, if you're thinking. telling the truth yes yeah, so then i can figure it out <laughs> i'm like i'm I I, I, I I go back and forth every second i feel that i feel very torn too i feel like i'm like i'm good no, I, you know what i'm good i Keep literally that to I, yourself i literally was about to tell this person i'm into like can you just like lie to me like just just lie like tell, just lie to me so i can feel good just for you're a like, second alexa play lie to me by one direction yeah <laughs> you ever heard that song yeah <laughs> no <laughs> wait where do you know where you are <laughs> Well, well, just saying, it's applicable. Well, you should um, you can, you should come to like some Louis Tomlinson premiere on May thirteenth. We should invite you. Oh my god, period. <laughs> yeah. I would love to go. I would love to go. I loved One Direction. I was a big One D fan. Yeah, I remember that. I was a big mm -hmm. One D fan. I was a big Jonas Brothers fan. I think I was more into the Jonas Brothers because I was like, that was like my prime like fangirl phase. Yeah. Like I was like a young girl. Um, when the one, when One Direction came out, I was a little bit older. So like, I did love them a lot, but it wasn't nearly as feral as my obsession with the Jonas Brothers. Like when they did their Broadway thing, I was like, I have to go. Whose balls do I have to put in my mouth to get there, bitch? <laughs> like I was like balls in your court. Literally. I will do it if that's what it takes. And did you? Yes, you, I did. You got there? I didn't put balls in my mouth, but I did go. Sick. I went to night one and two, which is like my favorite albums of theirs. It's like their very first one. And of course. A little bit longer. Oh my God. So incredible. They're so great live, but it was so fun. It was like a fucking blast. So it's, reliving my teenage years. That's it. It's like nostalgia. It's reliving yeah. the, the heydays. It's like really yeah. escaping from reality. And, and in that moment, like I love a Jonas Brothers show because well, I love every, I, I love concerts because in that yeah. moment, you really know that you're sharing this moment with so many like-minded people yeah. who really just want to escape and enjoy it and trans just, uh, just be transported back to wherever the right. fuck they were happiest the last time they heard that no, song. No, actually. And I was such a, fa oh my God, I had everything. I went to like six Jonas Brother concerts when I was like a kid and, um, my mom actually took me to my very first one in Vegas. We like skipped school for a day. Sick. We flew to Vegas. We like took a little limo. <laughs> me thinking that they're going to see me and be like, bring that 12 year old up here. Uh, but I also was a grown man. Like I was like five, eight when I was 12. So like, they're like, get that man out of here. He scares me. Um, I was like way bigger than everybody. It was honestly kind of ominous how big I was. Girl, I said my dad's six, six. My sister's normal size. I'm not like, I'm fucking huge. So I feel like, that was like my, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is my whole personality now. Like I literally wore all their concert shit to school to like show my friends like, oh my God, this. Yeah, I was in Vegas this weekend. Sorry, I was seeing the Jonas Brothers. Um, so getting to like relive that was crazy. I got to relive it as a as a grown man now. So. Have you met them? No, I haven't, which is crazy. Do you want crazy. to or do you, want it to, you don't want to be ruined? I would love to meet them. Uh, I think that would be so fun, so cute, so silly, goofy. I don't know if they'd love to meet me, but I would love to meet them. And I think too, like when I when I did go, I worked with SeatGeek, which I love, and they uh, got me tickets to the shows. And so I had to like post my video after. So I literally posted this concert video. It was like this video I made on YouTube with my sister and my friend <laughs> to try and win Jonas Brothers tickets. <laughs> I literally put that in there. I feel like I saw this. Yeah, I put it in my brand deal. <laughs> like, I put it in there. Like, you know that trend that's like, I wish I knew you earlier? Yeah. That was what I did, but <laughs> with my Jonas <laughs> Brother video, and then I put videos of me at their concert now, and it was like, all the comments were like, I had no idea that you were like, a fangirl like that which is so funny because when i filmed that fucking video my sister's a dumbass and didn't know that tri-state area meant the east coast yeah. 
and we're in California and we were like, we're so gonna win. And we weren't even, we got disqualified because we we're not even in the fucking tri state area. But then I got to see them in the tri state area as an adult. Full so, circle. Full circle. There you go. Nothing happens to me by accident. So. You should knock on that log and manifest meeting the Jonas Brothers. Oh, yeah. I'll, no, I'll knock I'll on manifest. the log. log on the log. log. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, good luck, wood. wood. Yeah. Love, love. Ooh. I'll meet the Jonas Brothers. Sure. Fuck it. I was a big Nick girl. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's gorgeous. Priyank is gorgeous. Yeah, but he's also a Virgo, so I don't know if it never oh. would have worked. Sorry, Nick. Sorry to bring it to you. <laughs> never would have worked. We're both Virgos. Yeah, we'd kill each other. The loss is yours, Nick. We'd be so successful, but we would kill each other for sure. That's hot. <laughs> That's hot. That's hot. There you go. You got to listen to the comment section. It's on Spotify exclusively. We're going to put a link in the description below. Final thoughts, Stan? No, you were great. My face hurts. I'm laughing. My cheeks <laughs> hurt. You. Thank you. God, I really thank you so much for giving us your time and energy today. Oh my gosh, of course. I could thank talk to you, you for 77 me. more hours. I love y'all. Before you go, how do you define success? How am I going to find success? How do you define it? Oh, how do I define success? I think um, success is measured for me through like like true like 100% happiness. Like if I feel really happy and confident with where I'm at in life and where I'm going, I feel like you're successful no matter what. What does happiness drive from? I would say my happiness, I think, like, where it's derived from. like Where, where does it I come it. from? For me, I feel like it comes from feeling validated in my purpose, like, what it is I'm doing for a living, love, you know what I mean? And then support, I guess, is where my happiness comes from, I would say. Beautiful. <laughs> and also making a lot of money. That's, That's <laughs> also defining success. And <laughs> she's kidding. a Virgo. And I'm a Virgo. And remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the comment section. There's a link in the description below. Drew Drew Afawalo, everybody. Thank Woo! you. Thank you, Zach Sang. Thank I worship you. at the altar that is Zach Sang. Get out of here. <laughs>